like I said. Um, the move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, I don't use an ultrasound. I mean, honestly, my goal is to get an ultrasound just right. because I don't know if you've seen the one Socrates uses. Shout out to Socrates. Socrates in the house right now. See him in the building. I appreciate What's you. What's up, Sock? Um, but he has this thing called a butterfly ink. It's a, it's a ultrasound that hooks up to your phone. And, okay. you know, my biggest thing is like, I don't, you know, I just don't want to have a big clunk piece of fucking shit that I'm like, clunk, you know, I have to whip it out and plug it all rolling in. Rolling around. Right. Yeah. You know, like this, this thing is literally fits in, in your pocket. Like it's yeah. nuts. But anyways, um, the reason why I feel personally, like I would want to invest in ultrasound at this point is because I, I don't know my green tree pythons nearly as well as I know my ball pythons. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm like you, like I could definitely tell that this female is either going to go the, go the distance or obviously she's doing something to show that she's probably just going to reabsorb sure. or miss out. Right. Sure. And with, with sock, like he, he knows that with his green tree pythons, like, I mean, he was able to determine a snake's ovulation by the size of the snake ovulation that it was going to, it was going to be a horrible clutch. And I was like, how the fuck do you know that? Well, the ovulation wasn't too big and he started breaking it down. But I feel a lot of that is, a lot, of not, a lot of that knowledge you, you know if you have an ultrasound. You sure? You know what yeah, I mean. You do. Um, but but at the end of the day, like like I said, if it was just my ball pythons, I mean maybe just because I don't have enough experience with the condors, and you've been doing the condors with zero ultrasound for right. this entire time. That's right. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you this: What would you feel like the biggest reasoning um, of you to this day still not having an ultrasound? For me, it's just a time thing. Like it's just it would be one more extra thing that I have to do. You yeah, know, another and it's additive. like another another chore to put on the <laughs> list to do. Um, <laughs> and you know, like my my uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, I could see it being a, a, a big tool if you didn't. You were worried about spreading a male too thin. You know, right. you you would know exactly when to introduce him, where to you know who to put him with. But you know, my collection's small enough that I'm not like you know. I'm not trying to breed a male to 20 females or whatever, you know, right. or, or whatever. I mean, I, I have one that produced, even with no ultrasound, produced 10 clutches last year. Right. One male. Right. Uh, sired 10 clutches. So, um, you know, maybe if you were, uh, if you were trying not to spread your male too thin, I could see it. But for me, it's just a time thing, man. It's just one, you know, one more. And it doesn't really change the outcome, you know. It kind of helps you. Just, you're just—it's a cheat code. Like you basically yeah. know what the prediction is versus having to wait and that, just see. That's right. Which is cool. Like which, like I feel like when you have an, a crazy project on the line, and, and when you have a male that's being used to like you know seven, eight different ball pythons. Yes. Which a lot of these heavy fucking hitters they do that, but they know how to do that. Right. Like, you know, it's Billy from Mutation Creation is like a pro at like two locks and done. Oh, really? Yeah. Like he doesn't need anything more than two locks for the most part. Okay, and he, and he knows it. You know what yeah. I mean. But it's because of the whole like his habits, what he has. You know what I mean. So I mean, to an extension, there is a way where you could use that ultrasound to a huge benefit. But mm -hmm. it takes the research, the geeking out, the nonstop like extra right. additive to where I, I actually like the predict. I actually like the 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 suspense in a way. Even though this year sucked, I had nothing till June, and I thought I was just gonna fucking tank. And this is after me talking shit all year, how ball pythons are easy. And I'm like, fucking walk on the park, try chondros, blah, blah, blah. And I, and then literally I'm like sweating balls at it's fucking June and I don't have nothing. You know no, what I mean? no, no clutches yet. But it all came in it, it, like, like you were talking about yesterday, how your shit goes late mm -hmm. and dude, all my shit just went super late this year. And I, this is only technically my second full year being a breeder. So, I mean, I could have many other awkward years to come. Like I don't really, yeah. you know, especially being in Southern California, I, I told you, I use the actual like <clears throat> ambient heating as my, my weather. I mean, as the temperature, yeah, so you're kind of dependent upon the outside temperature, right? You know, and it, here to a certain extent too. I mean, this room is pretty, ins pretty well insulated, but it's still not going to get cold here. I mean, you guys, this is about as cold as it's been all year. Feels good. As, as you know, when you guys it got It's pretty chilly, yesterday. but it's not like not like East Coast chilly or like Maryland, like you were talking about. Or yeah, this is kind of like the, the yeah. yeah, the first uh uh you know, it's not even really a cold snap. It's like whatever, 45, 50 degrees. Yeah. Um, but it's perfect pair pairing weather. That's that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh but kind of the same thing, you know. I I can't really start cooling things until you know about now. Right. Whereas other people, I know other parts of the country, they've already got pairings started for next year. Yeah, I feel like there's some places like soon as October hits, they're already like mm -hmm. locking shit up. I'm over here waiting for like you know I'm barely half done with my season and it's October. You yeah. know what I mean? But at the end of the day, that's why it's like you know your your demographic is your demographic. Like where what happens in your room happens in your room. Mm -hmm. And you know I remember in the beginning, 
And what threw me off is how like, you know, people, people have seasons and like, you know, oh, if she's not going at this point of the year, she's not going to go at all. Well, right. That's not necessarily true. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe with their collection, because the way they have their shit seasoned. Right. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, you know, I, like I said, I had so many girls that I was like, dude, nothing. What do I do? Just keep pairing. And they eventually two, three months, like past what they did last year late a clutch oh know? really like okay. going like two three months late you that, know what that's, I mean? that's pretty late that's pretty wild most of the ones like since since i've started tracking it like you know all the dates for when they lay most right. of them are within a month or so every year right of each other minor you know, themselves right mine are at least two to three months okay i have maybe i don't get me wrong some are like within that month mark but i have weird scenarios where they're literally going like for instance, my last my last clutch of the year is scheduled to drop sometime December, but my last clutch of the year last year was October. To drop or to no, hatch? To drop, okay. like to drop, not to hatch, to drop. Yeah. So uh, same here. I had a clutch late in October, and this year I'll hatch babies in ball python babies in December, which right. is the latest ever for me. Most last year I had some in November, but it's it's just seems to be getting progressively later every 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 year, which is kind of cool because you know. It's bad in a sense because everybody who's working in the same project as you, they're offering babies for sale sooner right. than you are. Or other way around. Or, or, uh, or like, or I mean, you could be the one offering sooner. It just it depends. depends. Yeah. Right. But I mean, if your season runs late and they, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. then they get them before. But I also have babies in the part of the year when a lot of people don't. Right. So there's less, you know, there's um, com there's less competition. competition right. And there's less animals, less babies available, I would say, at that, you know, that time. But of I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, you, there's not too many people even working with the ball pythons that you have. Like the, right. the ultra, you're very far advanced in your ultra meal game, which we'll yeah. talk about that just so you know, we're going to dip heavy into the ball pythons on this one. Um, but yeah, like the ultra male game, you know, is something where like people are still trying to even ch chase a single gene ultra male, mm -hmm. and you already have that going into double recessives. Like mm -hmm. you have, you know, which we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, let me ask you this: like, are, do you do you kind of price or base off like what you see on morph market? Is that how you price what you what you just hatch depends? Or how's that I mean, work for well, you? a lot of the stuff I have, I'm the only one on like you know you nobody. Go, you can't no, you can't price nothing. Can't price it. So right. I'll like I'll go to like say like to me, DG and Ultramel are are kind Equ of equivalent. equivalent right. You know, so like I'll go for you know for the most part. There's obviously some some things that are real hot right now. Right. DG Clown obviously is is crazy. I mean Ultramel Clown hot is, is hot too. Yeah. But you know, right now it seems like this year and last year, DG is just kind of what everybody that's what everybody wants, you know. Um, but I'll go on Morph Market and look at DG and say, okay, here's a DG with one codon gene, or here's right. a DG with two codon genes, and they're charging this for it. And right. then so I'll kind of you know use that to base my prices on. Because that's I mean, at the end of the day, a hot gene's a hot gene. So you can right. always compare one of your hot genes to another hot gene. That's right especially to another gene that's similar like clown to clown yeah and it's right? also it's also subjective you know like a snake is worth right to one person that's got the things to plug in with it right you could it's almost like you can't overpay for this for the right snake right you know you could be you could pay double or triple what somebody else would would what it would be worth to somebody else and still make your money back quickly if you have the right things to plug it in with, you know right what's your uh what's your opinion on you know some people who've never really invested in high-end projects ball pythons kind of being the ones to say stay or stay away from high-end projects only because there's really not a market for it there's people who aren't willing to spend five thousand dollars on a ball python which i feel like is very false and i know you have customers who've easily been wanting to spend five thousand dollars with you on a ball right, python yeah. but at the end of the day like i said these are this is coming from people who've never put themselves in that bracket but at, at, from your opinion what do you feel about the high-end market side of the ball python game to me, that's the e to me, it's like the, the highest, the my most expensive stuff sells the fastest. It's less less of a worry. Yeah. It sells faster. There's more people that want it. You know, most of it sells before I can even put it on morph market because I'll post an Instagram or you know, put something on my Instagram, somebody will or will message me. Right. Or, you know, Facebook message me or whatever. Or they'll see um, like I'll get a lot of stuff where like I'll post like say an ultra male het clown on morph market and somebody will use that ad and contact me and say, Hey, do you have any ultra male clowns? Right. Um, that aren't posted, you know, anything that's not posted yet. So, um, you know, in that case, they don't, you know, those are sold before they even, I even have to really advertise them, right. you know, that's, what, um, that's the best case scenario right there. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So let me ask you this. Um, 
Shit. God damn it. My mind, my mind went south. Um, Thank you for watching this week's Trap Talk clip. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, drop me a comment. And if you're looking for exclusive, non-release content here on YouTube, you're going to want to go down to the link and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Once you become a part of the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, and then you also get tapped into all unreleased content. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and I'll catch you guys here next week. Cheers!